How you doing? Before she gets started, this has been burning in my spirit ever since I walked in this house this morning. Bless the Lord. And then when Sis picked that rock up and said, He without sin cast the first stone that speaks volumes, don't it? Amen. Yes, it does. Well, I'm here to tell you today. The Bible tells us not to worry about the smoke in our brother's eyes. We better worry about the timbers in our own eyes. That's right. That's right. So if we're casting judgment against somebody, we better look at ourselves first. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you, the teacher, when he gives a test, he's quiet. That's right. That's right. I don't care if you're just talking about them. I don't care if you're just having a conversation about them. If they're not in the room, and if you can't have a conversation with them in that room, you better not be speaking it out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. Don't speak it out of your mouth. I don't care who you are. I don't care how high you are in the church. Amen. There is no status in the church. But there is headship. There is headship. And there's a way things are supposed to be run. And it starts right here. Yep. Amen. Like it or lump it, it starts right here. Amen. And if it don't start here, it better not start in this church. Amen. It better not start in this church. Amen. I've kept quiet for a while now. Steph asked me this morning, she said, why are you, why you being so quiet? I said, tell her nothing. The Lord ain't let me speak. Because that's what he keeps telling me. The one that's giving the test is being quiet. Mm -hmm. To see how the little one that's taking the test is doing. Right. And I can see how they're doing. They're casting stones when they got sin in their own life. They're judging the book by the cover without opening the book. They're judging one another when it says, judge not lest you be judged. Amen. Do we understand what that means and say it? Do we get it in our minds what that means and say it? We can't judge one another and, and expect the Father not to judge us for that same judgment. Amen. It's time to wake up. Amen. I'm just here to tell you we're an open book. My house has been through hell for the last two weeks. Amen. I've been to a point I don't even want to go home because I'm part of the fight. We're an open book. I don't hide nothing from anybody. And I won't hide anything from Facebook. I won't hide anything from anybody out there. Because as pastors of this church, we need to be an open book. Amen. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to be showing you all how to go. Amen. But you don't think we don't fight hell too? Come on. It's fight has been her worship because we're the head. Amen. She said it earlier. If it could get to the head, guess what? It's got the rest of you. I'm sorry for your luck, but it does. It's true. Just like that umbrella. We have an umbrella. Our umbrella's over you guys. If our umbrella gets a rip, guess what? That water's leaking in, baby. I don't care how you look at it, it's leaking in. We love you guys. And we're praying for you guys. It's been very hard in my house to pray. Been very hard. It's been very hard to get in our word. So don't think the devil ain't fighting us just as hard as he's fighting you. Because he's got us weak. So don't cast that stone when you don't clean your own self out. Don't cast that judgment. Until you judge yourself in a mirror, looking amen. at yourself. Come on, amen. Because this walk is about yourself. Amen. And 
we're trying our best to leave. I may be quiet until I get poked. I hear them. I hear these women say all the time, "Don't poke the bear." Yeah. The bear's been poked. <laughs> they always say, "Mama bear," but I'm gonna say, "Papa bear," because you are. You are our kids. That's Just because right. we're his kids, That's you're right. our kids. Because we're here trying to lead and, 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 and guide you all. That's right. But you all holler that we want we want Bible study. I tell them we need to in the Bible study. Guess what? Nobody shows up. Come on. Just being honest today, guys. I've got to be honest. Nobody shows up. Prior to meeting Monday night, nobody shows up. Amen. And we wonder why the devil wants to fight us back. We wonder why the devil gets a hold of us. Come on. Amen. When are we going to stand? Come on. When we can't do nothing else, stand. Amen. When we can't do nothing else, pray. Amen. I don't mean to be mean to anybody. Come on. You're not being mean. You're not being mean. Correction is love. I don't mean to be mean to anybody. But here's the thing is about it, guys. we got to get this right. If we want our family saved, if we want our family in this church saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, we got to get it right, guys. We got to get it right. Laying out ain't going to do it. Laying out is opening the door, saying, "Here you go, devil, we'll have it all." We cover ourselves with prayer. When are we going to get it right? When? It's hard enough to walk this walk without it. Because the devil's coming at every every angle. Because we've been stepping out. We've been going to these other churches trying to help them get, get started in this. And we've been getting knocked here and there and there and yonder. When are we going to get it right? When are we going to step up and say, no, no more, devil? You can't have my family. You can't have my house. Amen. You can't have my church. Amen. This ain't mine and Stephanie's church. This is your all's church. Amen. And you understand that. You make the church. Hallelujah. It's not about Pastor Hallelujah. Stephanie and me. It's about the church. And you guys are the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll stand and fight side to side with you. But you've got to step up. You've got to step up to the plate. Yes, sir. You've got to step up and help us fight this fight. We gotta get it right, guys. If we're ever gonna see our family stay, if we're ever going, if we're ever gonna get out there, because because in here's where we draw our draw our strength. Out there when the fight starts. How many else has been hell this week? How many else has been hell the last month? You want me to tell you why? Because we're starting to step out. We're starting to step out. We're going into his territory. Because he keeps yeah. turning into ours and we let him sit right beside us. Come on, pray, come on. We let him sit right beside us and not do a thing about it. Come on. Not do a thing about it. Come on. Brother, you need more pride than you because you've got seven kids at your house. You've got seven kids to cover. Thank you, we should be lifting you up because you've got them babies to take care of. Amen. 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 And the devil wants them. Hallelujah. And the devil wants them. He's coming for our kids. He's coming for our spouses. Me and he's coming for our spouses. Yeah, and if we don't stand up and be the man come and tell him to get out, come on, go back to hell where you belong, come guess on. what we're doing? We're opening the door for him to have our kids and our, and our spouses. Yeah, yeah. It's time we get it right, guys. And women, if you've got a praying man, pray for that man. Amen. Men, if you've got a praying wife, pray for that wife. That's what we're supposed to be. Unity means this. Amen. Unity means that the devil can't get in between us. Amen. But if something happens and he gets in between us and we start fighting, guess what? We've opened the door. It ain't him coming in. We've opened the door for him. We've done it. We can say all we want to that he's coming in and stone. Honey, we open the door. Because he has no more power than what we give him. And if he comes in and takes something from us, guess what? We're slapping. We're slapping. I'm not giving you no credit whatsoever. But honey, whenever he comes into my house and he comes to get the hold of us, guess what? I'm looking at this guy. I'm looking at this guy. Because I'm supposed to be the head of that house. 
I'm supposed to be the head of my children. And if he comes to get the hold of us, guess what? It's me. It's me. It's me, oh me, me, oh Lord. Now, I'm not saying that as a pity way, but it's me. I can't look at her and say it's your fault. I got to stand up and be the man and say it's my fault. Like I said, we love you all, and we are trying our best to lead. Amen. But there's things that goes on in churches that shouldn't be going on in churches. Come on. Things that take place in churches that shouldn't be going on in churches. That's why they put a head in charge. Right. Right. And when that head starts seeing things working that shouldn't be working, Come guess what? Yeah. If he's any kind of leader, he's going to rise up and say, uh-uh. That ain't right. Well, I'm here today to tell you, uh-oh, that ain't right. Come on. That ain't right. It's time to mark up. It's time to line up. It's time to get up. Amen. Like I said, if anything else goes on in this church, it better come through me or Pastor Seth, or it ain't coming through. Amen. That's a promise. Amen. And if I see it, I'm coming to you. I don't care who you are. I'm coming to you. And you're probably not going to like it. But you know what? It's time to get back to the church. Amen. This is Remnant River Worship. It ain't Joe Blow's church down the road. Come on. It ain't Joe Blow's church on the internet. This is Remnant River Worship. He put Pastor Stephanie and myself in charge. Amen. Yeah, we might have been afraid, but guess who put us in charge? He did. Right. Just like as he's in charge of us, he believes us. We're going to lead you guys. And if you get off course, don't think I won't take something. See this? <laughs> See this? <laughs> this is what they use when they line the sheep up. Well, guess what? You're our sheep. I may not break your legs, but I like cracking the head. We love you all. We love you all that much. Did you understand that? We love you all that much that we're willing to do that. To help. It's not to harm. It's not to harm anybody, but it's no. to help. No. Because when you start seeing a, a sheep, when that's a, a guy seeing a sheep, what's his name? What is he? Shepherd. Shepherd. See, the devil messes my mind because I'm not good with words. But when a shepherd starts seeing that sheep come off, get off straight, guess what he does? He grabs it. And he brings it back. Just like Jesus does us. He grabs us and brings us back. I preached a message not long ago. If you're still behind, I'll come back and get you by the hand. But if you want to stay there, baby, I'm going to leave you there. Because you don't want to come out of your mess. You don't want to come out of your sin. I can leave you to the city pool, but I can't make you cannonball. There you go. Well, I never thought that'd be in the message. There it is. There it is. Speak, speak. We love you all that much that we're willing to do that. You all know any time you call us, we're there for you. But I am going to ask you this. Monday night is for prayer. Will you clean to me? If at all possible, be here. I don't care if you've got to come in late. Be here. That prayer is what's going to bring us together. That prayer is what's going to hold us together. That prayer is what unifies us. So when we go out those doors to minister, when we go out those doors to another church, we're going to be stronger. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all today, that's what I had. That was burning me up right here.
Well, that's fine. Somebody needs to tell you about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hate them all. held harsher. And I can assure you right now as I stand before you and as I stand before God that even he is coming for every one of you. He wants you. He wants your family. He wants it all. Prayer, fasting, coming together and worshiping is the only thing that's going to keep him off. Do you understand that the praying church right now is the only thing that's keeping the Antichrist in faith? The praying church is what's keeping the Antichrist from walking these streets and taking authority in this world. That's all important. Wednesday night when we done the temple, we were talking about Sister Denise done the altar of incense, which represents our prayers. That was supposed to be in the Holy of Holies. That's how important our prayers are. That's how important prayer is. That, well, that very representation of your prayer. Sister Bobby had a vision of heaven, of the throne room, of the incense, of your prayers that were coming up to the throne. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? And what does the enemy fight more than anything? And this I hear in my message, praying oh, Jesus, Lord, right. God, Lord, I give you praise. But it is our prayers. It is our prayers that he fights and the studying of his word. That's what the enemy wants. He desires to take that relationship because the prayer is your relationship with God. This is when you talk to your father. This is when you lay it all out there. Lord, here I am. Come on. I'll let you know we've been fighting with the swimming pool. But God gave me a message out. That's for you, Paul. Praise the Lord. Praise you see, here a while back, Bill Turner got out there and God bless my husband. Lord, bless my husband. Bless my husband, Lord. He got out there and he scrubbed that thing, Sister Bobby. He scrubbed that thing. Let the water out of it, scrubbed it, had it sparkling clean. They went a spot in it, Ernie. But me, what we didn't realize was there was something that was hidden that we didn't see. Come on. There were some holes in there. Yeah. There were some holes in there that we could not see with our eyes. With our carnal eyes, we could not see this. So he filled that pool up. And I was getting all excited there. Oh, boys. Because y'all know I love my swimming pool. Yeah. Carson loves that swimming pool. Right now, I could care less about that swimming pool. But that baby. Right. That baby wants that swimming pool. Yes. He filled it up. He held water for a couple of days. And got that thing for all right. Well, the pump went down. The pump wouldn't work. It just quit. Brand new pump. Just got it last summer. Wouldn't work. It was dead. So he called. He still had a warning. He prayed to Jesus. They replaced it. Sent us another one. Waited for that to come. Well, the very day that the pump rolled in, he goes out to the swimming pool. And guess what? The water was laid out underneath to where it goes to the skinner. Here we go again. Here we go again. But what we need to realize is that when we are trying to empty ourselves out of the nastiness. You see, I woke up this morning and the Lord spoke warning, trigger warnings. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Trigger warnings. I'm like, okay. So I hung over and I said, okay, trigger warning. What's trigger warning? Think about it. You get on, you get on YouTube, or you get on the uh, uh, TikTok, and every now and then you roll across something they'll say, "Warning, trigger warning." Uh-huh. What that video is going to do, Jack, is it's going to upset something in your life. Uh-huh. It's going to upset something in your life. But I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? You see, I had a trigger war- trigger warning happen to me here Friday night. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure did. I had a trigger warning. You see, there was something in my life that I had placed higher than God. Mm-hmm. That's my granddaughter. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be flat out honest with y'all. Because we're transparent in this church. Come on. Come on. I placed my granddaughter, Morgan, on a pedestal. Come on. 
And I lost my cool in this sanctuary because we gathered here as heads of this church Friday night to pray, to pray for all of you all, to have all our prayer service, to whatever this hell is that's wrapped around this church and is constricting the life out of us. We were going to break it off. And all hell came in. And I realized, trigger warning, there's something in your life. You're placing higher than gold, and you've got to get it locked out. Why am I echoing like that? Why didn't turn this off? It sounds really loud because you all know I get loud. I got a call. Is this live? Lay it live. I got a call from my daughter-in-law. No, first I got a call from my son. And you see the amazing thing about Christian people, about people that walk with God, the very first thing they want to do is point their finger at you when something goes wrong in your household. They got their eyes all over you, let me tell you. They got their eyes. Y'all are watching me. They're watching me. They're watching you. Everybody's watching. And just as soon as something goes wrong, I'm all over the place this morning. So just as soon as something goes wrong, and I've had it happen to us before, we can walk up right or try our best to walk up right in front of God and do the right thing. But let your child fall. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, all hell broke out, at least in here one night, because our children fail. Fingers was pointed. You can't be a pastor. You can't run a church because you can't run your household. That's biblical. That's scripture. Uh -huh. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm here to tell you that no matter what you do, Come on. you just keep on. Hold on. on to the hand of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. You keep right on holding on to the hand of God. Because I'm here and I'm standing. I told the Lord right here this morning, I made my declaration again. I said, I'm still here. And I'm still standing on your word. And I'm standing on your promises that you spoke to me. And I'm standing on your promises that the doors of that church is going to open and people are going to come in. Yes, Lord. Back to the swimming pool. Somewhere in that liner, somewhere in this liner, Somewhere in your soul, yes, there's a leak. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with a trigger warning. You turn that video on and it upsets you. Mm -hmm. That's a trigger warning. Come that on. means there's something in your soul yeah. that needs to be fixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what society, what school systems, and what people that think they're doing the better good for all of us had decided to do is they're going to take away everything that's a trigger warning. They don't want you to deal with your problems. They don't want you to deal with what happened. They don't want you to. Because as long as we're not dealing with it, as long as we're just sitting back and just letting anything go and just compromising with anything and everything and not saying, no, Lord, that's not right what I'm feeling in my spirit right now. That's not right what I feel in my soul. I need you to move on me. The enemy yeah. has got control. Yeah. Yeah. If you get yeah. mad at the preacher, uh -huh. stop taking the anger out on the man and the woman of God and get your soul right. Yeah. Stop throwing your thoughts in the pulpit. Get your soul right. I'm doing my best to get my soul right so that I can give you a word that you can chew on for the week. We get ready to talk about the table of showbread Wednesday. Yeah. That bread sustained for a whole week. Bread will sustain you. Yeah. Bread was something that was a commodity. It was something very special back in those days. Yeah. In those days. They didn't have pork chops and hamburgers every night. They had bread. They broke the bread with one another. They went from house to house and broke the bread. They, the bread represented life. I'm trying to give you some bread on Sunday. We're trying to give you some bread on Wednesday. We're trying to grow some strength on Monday night. He got all my sick out Trigger warnings. Your past does not define who you are in God today. Amen. As a matter of fact, He got to make you stronger than who you are yes. in God today. Yes. You see those little holes that get in the liner that we don't see in the corner line. Well, that's got it all going on. But inside, they're living up here hell. Come on. Money in the bank ain't what it's about. All right. A fancy car ain't what it's about. Amen. 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 
And I begin to think when God began to deal with me about this, you know, he was just pouring into me today about these trigger warnings. And because he was telling me, or he showed me here Friday night that I had a problem. Come on. Bless your Lord. You see, when that trigger happened, when I had fear that I was going to lose my granddaughter, I went crazy. And there was nothing I didn't say. And I tried to justify that. I tried to justify that with the fact that I love her. That is no justification. Our outburst of anger, the way we present ourselves in an unholy manner, is not pleasing to God. And it is never justified. The only thing that will justify you is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's biblical, baby. Amen. He is our justification. That's what Pastor B means when he says, why are you worried about the speck that's in your brother's eye. Right. Come on, come on. And you that can't get the plank yep. out of yours. Your own eye. Come on, baby. Yeah. I've told you all this many, many times. We're all hot messes and we all need Jesus. Amen. And when we stop fighting him tooth and nail, when he's trying to straighten us up, amen. can I get an amen? amen? Stop throwing rocks at the preacher. You can throw me all you want to, I'm still standing. As long as I'm still standing, I'm still preaching. But God began to begin to deal with me with these trigger warnings and all of this. And he said, Look at Esther. How many of you read the story of Esther? I know Lindsay has. That's her favorite, favorite, I think, favorite book in the Bible, besides Jesus saving us. But if you look at you look at Esther, look at her past before she ever walked in to the calling that God placed on her life. She was orphaned at a young age. I'm not going to read these scriptures, y'all. She was exiled. You know what that means? She was put out of her country. She was put out of her home, and she was placed into bondage, basically, living by somebody else's rules. In, in, a, in a lifestyle that she had had never been exposed to. Think about this. You get exiled. You can't open your Bible up and read it. Amen. This is the kind of thing she went through, guys. Not only that, as she was growing up, she grew into this beautiful woman with the next thing we know, she's been kidnapped. She's been dropped right out of her home, drug off, over to the palace. <coughs> And at that palace, she was forced to live in a situation she wasn't comfortable with. Really read the book of Esther. I'm not going to go into detail, but read it. Read it. Think about what she went through. Went through. Everybody says, oh, Queen Esther. She saved her people. But the enemy literally tried to snuff her out before she ever got to that point to save her people. The enemy is trying to snuff you out today. He's trying to make sure that you don't reach that point where that assignment comes into full force. I see it all the time in here. I see it happen with me. I see it happen with you. And I am sick and tired of it. And I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. If you don't want the assignment, say, Lord, I don't want it. I don't want it. Give it to somebody else. Because just like Mordecai told Esther, you can either rise up and do what you're supposed to do, or freedom will come through somebody else. But your family will perish is exactly what the Lord said to her. You can rise up. You can handle your assignment the way you're supposed to in a godly fashion, or you can perish. I understand. I understand. How the enemy comes before you step in. And God's already spoke to you through me before. That whenever that assignment is getting ready to happen. You heard it up here. The heavens are stirring. The angels are stirring. And when they start stirring in your direction. So does the devil. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. They can stir all they want to. A thousand can be changed around me. Ten thousand can be changed around me. But I will not fear. Do you hear me devil? I will not fear. Get up off your carcasses Come on. and get out of your faces. Come on. Amen. You can't do this walk on your own. Amen. You need me. I need you. We need each other and we all need Jesus, honey. We've all got to have Jesus. 
Kelsey Cut High. Yes. And when it finally came for time for her to do that assignment with me, what did she say? If I perish, I perish. She went. She faced death. She looked it right in the eye. She looked the devil right in the eye. And she said, you can't have my family. You can't have my people. Amen. I look at the devil in the eye today and I tell him, you can't have Green Bay River worship. You can't have this congregation. You can't have peace on the ground. You can't have those like you can conquer. You can't have brothers in Christ. You can't have it in. You cannot have it, devil. Responsibility to pay the bills in church. Come on. I said it. That's not my burden to pack. My daddy packed it and I refuse. I will not pack it. Amen. I will not pack it. Come on. That's what your tithes are for. That's what your offerings are for. Make you pray about that and come back at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Bring all of your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse so that they will be made in, the house. in this house. Y'all can rock me. You can do whatever you want to do. I will walk in the calling that he has placed on my life. I will step where he tells me to step. I will build what he tells me to build. And I will turn down what he says to turn down. And I'm turning down today. I'm turning down the Nazis that's cutting your mouth. I'm turning it down. It's foolishness. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Not God's people. Amen. No, I ain't asking for you, buddy. I've got a full-time job. But this house right here, there needs to be meat in this house. Amen. For when they do come. Amen. Now you go home and you pray about that. Amen. I don't preach on money. I don't preach on prosperity. But God gave me this morning. He said it is not your responsibility, nor your husband's, nor your associate pastor, nor the leadership of this church to carry the bills in this house. And I ain't afraid of you. <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> Stop talking about people's money to get angry at you. Oh, yeah. 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 How do you don't tell me about it? I, I don't. I, I know. I know what my checking account looks like right now, Morgan. I know what it looks like. But God provides, honey. He provides. I don't do it out. I ain't missed a meal. I need to miss a few more. I don't do it out. But he comes first in my life. When my precious daddy was laying in the hospital, when he was getting ready to go on that bed, he said, Sissy, make sure I still got the message on my phone that the first check you write out of my money when it hits the bank is my ties. Hold on, let my see my ties. He was in the hospital. He was laying there. He was getting ready to go home with Jesus. But he wanted to make sure there was meat in this house. Can I get it out of there? It's not my responsibility to go out here and find some people to come in here. That's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to feed them when they come through the door. I won't pack that burden either. They don't come because you ain't going. I won't pack that burden either. I'll get rid of some things. I'm getting rid of some things here. Trigger warning. It's coming more. There's more coming. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But go home and tell me where I'm out of the word. Go home and read your Bible. Come back and tell me. Pastor, you got out of the word today. And I will apologize. But until then, she won't it. You see those trigger warnings? They cause that stuff to lay down inside of you. And you tried your best. You're trying your best. To get rid of things. You're trying your best to pour things out. Amen. And you're asking God to pour back in. But when he pours in, something's happening. It's not going anywhere. It's not taking root. Because there's some leaks. There's some leaks that you're not paying attention to. Come on. Amen. There's some leaks that the enemy's got you blinded to. Amen. Let him straighten you up. Let him heal those wounds. 
what I thank you. I don't care, devil, you can resist me. Why is this not perfect? I need some water. <laughs> I'm trying to pull it down. I know. I got to pull it Because I have submitted myself to God and he must free me. <laughs> I need all I got to hear. So avoiding these soul wounds, causing the leakage to happen. But God is trying to pour into you. If you think you poured it all out to him, can I tell you that every day you need to be pouring something out to him? Every day. Every day. What's still in your peace? I asked my people at, at the center. We talked about the serenity prayer. What's still in your peace? Do you ever ask God, what's still in my peace? Why is there turmoil? turmoil? Why is this coming against me? He'll tell you. He told me. Did I break it? Do I have to buy another one? I broke it. I will pay for it. Psalms 147 and 3 says, He healeth the broken heart and he bindeth up their wounds. Do you understand the heart in the Bible is your soul? It's not this thing that beats. Heart is your soul. Your soul is what needs mending. Your soul is what needs work. Amen. Amen. We've studied this before. Your spirit is made right by God, right? When you accept Jesus and Jesus comes in, your spirit is made perfect. That's why there's a war inside of you. Amen. That's why there's a war. Daddy taught me this a long time ago. He said, Did you realize that when you in this church, so your angels come on? Your uh -huh. angel's desire to be in God's presence. Your yeah. angel desires to worship. Well, so when you're sitting at home on the side, you don't want to be at church. Guess what? Your angel's sitting here, honey. Come he's on. sitting here. And he's praising God. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Every time I've ever missed church, I've laid the bed and water over it. Amen. Come on. <coughs> Come on. Please, please. Mm -hmm. Every time. Was it worth it? No, it wasn't. Get up, go to church. Get up, go to church. He wants to heal our souls. Back to our swimming pool. There were some things that had to happen. There were some things that had to happen. My husband had to get back out there again. He had to drain the water again. He had to <coughs> back in the pool again. He had to scrub the pool again. Because of those leaks, the water had turned nasty. And he had to start the whole process all over again. Some of us needs to start the process all over again. I had to start the process all over again. Amen. If anger is rising up inside you, you've got a problem. You've got a problem. If you can't talk good about somebody, you've got a problem. If you don't feel love towards somebody, you've got a problem. But I know the problem solver. Amen. His name is Jesus. So Jesse got out there and he scrubbed it all out again. Emptied all the water out. But guess what had to happen next? The whole liner had to come down. The whole thing had to come down. You see, when the enemy comes in, and he gets in your soul, he begins to build things. He begins to build things. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Block by block. Uh -huh. yeah. Block by block. Uh -huh. And while he's building that, yeah. everything uh -huh. that Jesus has built, he's tearing it down. Right. He's uh -huh. overpowering it as long as you continue to let him build. Right. As long as you continue to let him tell you you are worthless. Uh -huh. As long as he, you continue to let him tell you you can't make it if you pay your tithes. Uh -huh. As long as you continue uh -huh. here, you don't need to go to church. You need uh -huh. to do this tonight. This is more important. Uh -huh. He's building. He's uh -huh. building. He's uh -huh. building. He's building. And every time you, you listen to him say, you can't do this. You weren't meant to do this. Can I tell you right now, you were called for a time such as this. Just like Esther was. You see, what you, what you think when you read that verse, you think, oh, something big. Let me tell you something. You were called for tomorrow, Denise. You were called for this moment right now. You don't have to wait for a world war to break out. You don't have to wait for all this stuff. You can walk in that purpose now. Amen. I'm called for this time right now. I'm called to be at Remnant River Worship, 400 Duck Bar Road, at this time of day, on this day. For a time such as this. Lord, I praise you. 
beg for God just to let me come in here and just love on y'all. Can I do that every single day? I lose sleep on you. I lose sleep on you. I love you. But they ain't no time for patty caking, Morgan. They ain't no time for patty caking. It's going to be all right. Let me tell you something. It's only going to be all right when you give it to Jesus. And that's when it's going to be all right. I don't know why he placed in me this vision for you all. And I'm trying my best to help you build it. I'm trying my best to help you walk in it. But I gotta have some help. Let's stop getting on fire just to go minister and start getting on fire to be fed. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I've got to be fed. I've got to study to be fed. Yeah. I can't just study to minister to you. I've got to study to get a hold of Jesus myself before I can share it with anybody else. Amen. So these things that the enemy has built up in us, these slow wounds, the first thing you gotta do to get them healed is tear it down. Right. You gotta tear it down. Everybody wants to build, everybody wants to be a part of something great. But first, in order to do that, you've got to tear down. Yeah. You've got to tear down what you've allowed the enemy mm -hmm. to set up in your life. Thank you, Lord. Tear it down. And then you can build it. And if we build it, they will come. They will come, Pastor David. Amen. Amen. So when he tore that down, Jeff, and he took the line out, then he had to prepare. Are y'all following me today? Oh, yeah. 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 Good preacher. He had to get the bus out. Yeah. So I come out there and I went to the liner with Joan, and all that was there was the dirt on the bottom, the foundation. What is your foundation on? Come on. Amen. Well done. Amen. Because if it's on Jesus, you can come up out of this. Come on. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming Amen. up out of this. Amen. But he had to prepare it because I told him, I said, you know what, babe? I said, last year, I said, it felt real uneven and it felt hard places and rocky. We need to do something. He said, okay. So I come back out a little while later and Cameron's out there with the rock. And he's prepared. He's prepared. And the next thing I know, did y'all see the picture I put on Facebook of how neat the bottom looked? Yeah. It was on the prayer thing. Yeah. I said, ready for the liner. Yeah. Now we're ready to build. Amen. Amen. Now we're ready to build. Thank you, Lord. The ground of my soul uh -huh. is filled up. Yeah. And see, you don't kill something up unless you're ready to put something in. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you got it tilled up, Jeff, and you got it all nice and, yeah. and ready, and you say, Lord, now I'm willing. Yeah. Now here comes your loving part. Uh -huh. Here's what I'm going to love on you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then you call out to him. And you say, now, God, yeah. help me build. Yeah. Help yeah. me build this back. Yeah. So we'll come back out a little while later, early, and it was all ready. The message went out, well, here comes some people. you got some people that's going to help you build. you got some people that's going to help you. Once you tear down what the enemy has put in you, you've got some people around you that's going to help you build. And we went out there, and we put the liner, we put it out, kept stretching it out, kept getting it right. It takes some work, guys. Yeah, it, does. it takes some work. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And then when it was ready, when it was secured, yeah. is your faith secure? Come on, come is on. Is it secure? Are you anchored? Are you ready to build? Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. The cornerstone, the one that they all rejected, but the one that will never fail, the one that will never fall, the one that will always be there for you. We got it out. We got it secured. And I said, baby, now we're ready for the water. Ready. Yeah, come on. What does water represent? 
the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That we're ready. You've prepared and you've built. And you're ready now. You're ready now for him to come in. Not a hard process, no, but it takes work. No. I said that my job is not a hard job; it's the easiest nursing job I've ever had. But there's so much busy work that it will just wear me slap out if I let it. <laughs> trying to be a pastor, trying to be a leader without Jesus on my side and letting Him work through me will slap wear me out. Yeah. So if you're walking around today, you're just slap wore out. <laughs> If you're just slack wore out, you need to take a look at your spiritual walk. You need to take a look at who you're putting your trust in. You need to take a look at who you're calling out to, who you're depending on to help you through this. Pastor, Associate Pastor Gail was talking about a pastor that we all looked up to. And I've heard his testimony since about when that happened to him in his life, and he, he repented for that. But like I said, the enemy's always got somebody looking at you. Yeah. They always wants to pop up. Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you flat out what, what happened. This person is full of unforgiveness. Amen. Amen. And it's festered in this festered. Yeah. And not only that, I don't, I don't preach politics in the pulpit, but if you all read it, President Trump was mentioned twice. Uh -huh. yeah. Because he backed President Trump. Right. Uh -huh. They're trying, the enemy's trying to tear down. Yeah. What God is building. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. Y'all better get to pray. Right. Get to pray. Amen. Don't put your trust in me. Come on. Don't Amen. put your trust in Pastor V. Amen. The other Amen. leaders of this church. Put your trust in Jesus. Amen. Put him on the pedestal. Yes. He is the king yes. of kings and the Lord of the Lord. He is the one that is holy. Amen. Not me. Not anybody else Amen. in this church. Amen. Amen. But if you depend solely on your pastors or an evangelist or somebody on YouTube to feed you uh -huh. the bread, you're uh -huh. going to get disappointed. Uh -huh. You're going to get disappointed. You're going to get disappointed. I love my daddy better than anything, but he disappointed me at times. Yeah. 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 He did. He failed in ways. Because he was human. That's right. He was trying to pack things he wasn't meant to pack. Amen. He was trying to pack burdens, and he tried Amen. to take it upon himself. I'm not going to do that. Amen. Yes, I followed in my own man's footsteps, but there's certain things, there's certain places he walks with that I will not walk. Amen. I will not walk. Amen. That's why you got to keep growing. Amen. You can't just stop at what one person teaches you. Amen. You got to keep growing. Uh -huh. You got to get in this thing. You got to grab a hold of it. There was a reason why they put horns on the altar. Amen. Grab a hold of it. Yeah. Grab a hold of it. Pour yourself out. Grab a hold of it. You are a living sacrifice. Yeah. You yeah. are supposed to be a living sacrifice. Yeah. Now get it on the altar. Amen. Get it on the altar. Amen. There ain't no other way you're going to make it. Get your sacrifices on the altar. Amen. That's a better word than carcasses. <laughs> That's a more loving word than carcasses. <laughs> I got to get my sacrifice on the altar. Amen. I'm about to read you. Face down. What's that one song, Ten Toes Down? That one song that Joe Nestor sings? Talking about praying is Ten Toes Down? Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go to Romans first, though. I, I lied. I said, let's go stop. I've got a couple more scriptures here. Here you go, Romans. Church down the road, but I don't know. That's Church down the road. I just heard that. I don't know. I just figured I'd answer it. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on at the Church down the road. Church down the road would call for believers. Amen. Church down the road would call to break open prison doors. Church Amen. down the road would call to ride around on motorcycles to talk to the tough guys. Church down the road would call for a lot of things. The men in River Worship was, by you can't even name in this place. Amen. 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 That's what you've been called to do in this place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to Romans chapter 8. I'm 
put in verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities means weaknesses. You need the Holy Spirit to help you with your weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I was listening to a song this morning, Fortify My Faith. Oh, y'all need, need to listen to that. Yeah, the high priest. And he's praying for you. Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, 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 or Simon, Simon, the enemy desires to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fall. Snowden, Snowden, the enemy desires to sift you like wheat. Jesus has prayed for you that your faith. Not only has Jesus prayed for you, but everybody here. Amen. 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 worship. The enemy desires to sift you like wheat. But the high priest, Jesus Christ, yes. he has prayed for you yes. that your faith will not yes. falter. Yes. I am praying that your faith will yes. not falter. Yes. Fortify our faith, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus. <sighs> Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, and it helps our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. We pray for stupid stuff, y'all. Let's be honest with one another. Fill my bank account, Lord. Give me a new job, Lord. Not thank you, Lord, for the job that you're giving me right now. I'll just move on. I'll just move on. <laughs> We don't pray for what we ought to, but the Spirit, you guys, the Holy Spirit knows what we need to be praying for. He knows. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. They and nobody understands a thing but Jesus. What the Holy Spirit is crying out to the Father about. Amen. You know, I work in health care. Lord, you work in health care. These girls back here. You know that there's this thing called HIPAA. I can't just call Morgan up and say, hey, one of my friends sent your doctor. Can you tell them how they're doing? And Morgan tells me, even though she's got that information, it's a violation. You got HIPAA on your prayer life, honey, when you pray in a heavenly tongue. It ain't going nowhere. It won't go over here to Ida. It won't go over here to Ernie. It'll go straight from here. Straight to the throne room. Right. Yes. 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 Signed, sealed, and delivered, baby. You see, when, when, when Bobby saw that vision of the prayers, the incense of how the angel, tell me if I get wrong here, but the angel would go over to the altar morning and take the lid off. He said, Tommy, he said, Is that how it was? He would scoop it up. He would scoop it up. And take it behind the veil. What's behind the veil? The Holy of Holies. But all those prayers and that were in those jars didn't make it, did they, Bobby? No. No. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit. You're praying the will of God. Amen. This is my favorite. Well, it's all my favorite. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Let's look back at Esther again before we close. She went through all that hell and torment, but she stood. Amen. And she said, if I perish, I perish. But devil, you can't have my family. Amen. Amen. And what happened? God turned it around, didn't he? Amen. He turned it around. He'll turn your situation around. He's going to turn my situation around. As a matter of fact, Amen. he's already doing it. Amen. He's already Amen. doing it. Amen. We're in the process of the skin right now. Yeah, yeah. We're in the process Amen. of not claiming. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. I'm holding on to that because he's turning it around. He's turning it around. Is he turning your situation around? As a matter of fact, y'all should get up to your feet and you should turn around and say, Lord, turn it around. Thank you for turning it around, God. I thank you right now that you're working everything out of my good. Every situation, everything that I've been through, you are turning it around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we are called for his purpose. We are called for his purpose. Yes, I am. 
Amen. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He's turning your head. Yes, Lord. You're predestined. He knew this day was coming. He knew where we'd be right here. He knew the exact words to speak, whether you liked it or not. Whether I wanted to speak them or not. Whether Pastor B wanted to speak them. But he knew. He knew. I don't do this with myself. If I did, I'd already broke your legs. <laughs> no, you all. I seriously, I love y'all. I do. I love y'all. I do. Anybody got any comments, questions? Any more rocks to throw at me? Anybody want prayer? I'm just going to say something I haven't made this past week. Uh, and I need to say that this message today. Bye. 